So this is a plug-in hybrid, meaning it runs on both gasoline and electricity, but there are three signature technologies in here borrowed from the world of all electrics. Check this out. So first, a climate control system with a heat pump. You'll commonly find those in all electrics. They make it easier to generate more heat using less energy. And in the case of the Outlander plug-in hybrid, that means less running of that gasoline engine in order to keep the cabin warm when it's cold. Second feature, one pedal driving. We engage that right down here with this button. When that system is off, then releasing the accelerator just makes the vehicle coast, which is probably what you're used to. When you turn it on, releasing the accelerator has the same effect as moderately pressing on the brake pedal. That means using one pedal, we're able to regenerate more electricity. In that situation, the wheels are driving the motors, creating electricity to charge the battery, and we only have to put our foot on the brakes when we want to roll to a complete stop. And third, DC fast charging capability. Normally in a plug-in hybrid, we just have this one charge port here, but you'll notice on the Outlander, we've got this second one, much larger, which means that we can connect this to the same DC fast chargers commonly used to rapidly refill the batteries in all electric cars for a quick charge up on the go. For many, driving a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, or PHEV, PHEV, means visiting a gas station a few times a year instead of a few times a month. And for model year 2023, an all-new Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV hits the market with a new and improved plug-in hybrid powertrain. So how does the 2023 Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid work? A combination of electric motors and a gasoline engine drive the vehicle along. Like its predecessor, the new Outlander PHEV has a 2.4-liter .4 four-cylinder gasoline engine and one electric motor between its front wheels with an additional electric motor between its rear wheels. This is a fully functioned, fully electric all-wheel drive system, and the rear electric motor provides drive power to the rear wheels with no need for a drive shaft or conventional rear axle. The new electric motors are 40% more powerful than their predecessors. The front motor generates 114 horsepower, while the rear motor generates 134. This is a rear-biased electric all-wheel drive system, and not only do the larger motors provide more power in response, they're also able to recapture and regenerate more electricity as you drive around, stretching the range of the battery. It too has been upgraded and now offers an increased 20 kilowatt hours of energy storage. That's the size of the Outlander plug-in hybrid's electrical fuel tank. How does the 2023 Outlander plug-in hybrid compare to its predecessor? The upgraded motors and batteries see the all-electric driving range grow to about 61 kilometers in ideal conditions. That's sufficient to get most Canadians virtually off of gasoline for their daily driving and commuting, with overnight charging in their driveways. That 61 kilometer figure is shy of the rated range of the Toyota RAV4 Prime, which clocks in at 68, and about 20 kilometers less than Mitsubishi's initial EV range estimates, which originally pegged the figure at about 80 kilometers. When you exceed the all-electric range, the gasoline engine engages automatically as a generator to help sustain the batteries as you drive. In that situation, the engine isn't driving the wheels, but rather it spins away at smooth and steady revs to create electricity instead. The gas engine may also run in certain situations to create heat for the cabin, for instance in wintertime. And under heavy throttle, the engine can be physically connected to the driveline via a small clutch that's driven by a solenoid, so it can provide extra power to the wheels, but only when required, which is to say pretty rarely. The combined efforts of the motor and engine put 248 horsepower and a punchy 332 pounds of torque at the driver's disposal. The gas tank has also been enlarged, so with a fully charged battery and a full tank of gas, range approaches 700 kilometers, with the upgraded electrical components ensuring more satisfying and frequent use of all-electric driving along the way. So all said, EV range is up 54% and total range is up 33% versus the previous Outlander plug-in. And the extra punch from the powered up electric motors helps cut 2.2 seconds from its 0 to 60 time too. When do you charge the 2023 Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid? First, remember that charging this type of hybrid is never mandatory. As long as there's fuel in the tank, you're good to go. There is no situation where an Outlander plug-in hybrid driver is required to stop and charge unless it's convenient for them to do so. And you can drive this machine for 137 days without ever visiting a plug as long as there's gas in your tank. Of course, most drivers will simply recharge at home in their garage or driveway if you've got a level 2 charger. A full charge takes about 2 hours. Plugging into a standard household outlet will refill the Outlander's battery roughly overnight. 
Of course, in reality, charging your Outlander really only takes about 20 seconds of your time. That's how long it takes to connect the charging cable when you leave the vehicle, and to disconnect it and hang it back up when you come back. The rest of the charging process happens while you're off doing other things like cooking supper, playing video games, watching The Last of Us, or sleeping comfortably in bed. How does the 2023 Outlander plug-in hybrid work in the winter? In extreme cold, you should leave this plugged into a charger where possible, even if the battery is full. According to Chief Engineer Kentaro Honda, this is like having a block heater for the battery, and while connected, the pack will slowly and slightly charge and discharge itself over and over again to keep warm. There's also a heat pump climate control system which allows this vehicle to generate more heat using less energy. For drivers, this means a warm cabin faster and reduced frequency of the gasoline engine firing up on cold days to keep the heat on. Working in conjunction with heat provided by the gasoline engine and generator, drivers get a high-performance, high-efficiency climate control system that warms the cabin quickly and uses less electricity to do it. While preheating at idle, the heat pump cuts energy use by 40%, despite faster cabin warming. So from the driver's seat on a cold morning, expect the engine to run for the first few minutes of your drive to generate some initial heat, before switching off and allowing the heat pump to pick things up from there. Unlike other plug-in hybrids without heat pumps, I was surprised by how infrequently the engine needed to run to maintain heat. The goal is to leave the gas engine off at all times while there's charge in the battery, other than as required for cabin heat, and during a few various infrequent moments where there's a need for it to run. How does the all-wheel drive system work? Using a differential, an all-wheel drive system can provide much more power to one axle than the other, for instance to create a rear-biased all-wheel drive system. The thing is, that torque split is relatively inflexible. Using a clutch, an all-wheel drive system is much more flexible, able to widely vary the amount of power delivered to each axle. Thing is, the amount of power that can be sent to a single axle is limited. Like all vehicles with motor-driven axles front and rear, the Outlander PF does away with these constraints. There's less hardware like clutches, differentials, drive shafts, and gear sets in play. Electric motors respond instantly and aren't constrained by mechanical components. It's an all-wheel drive system completely free of typical constraints. This gives drivers access to a broader torque split than a clutch-based system, and more single-axle torque than a differential-based system, all while backing them with the immediate response characteristic of electric motors. In fact, according to Chief Engineer Kentaro Honda, this all-wheel drive system can make on-the-fly torque split changes about 17 times faster than a mechanical system. How is the 2023 Outlander plug-in hybrid to drive? At the core of the experience is a high viewpoint, low center of gravity setup. Drivers sit upright and alert in their seats with a commanding forward view and good outward sight lines, while most of the key masses of the vehicle, the battery pack and motors, are mounted down low in the body, perhaps knee height from the road. The driving position, visibility, and stable handling enabled by the low center of gravity are key confidence boosters when driving in winter conditions. Ditto the dedicated winter tires installed to my tester, a set of Kumo Wintercrafts in this case. Building on this confidence is the performance and response of the machine on snow and ice. Active yaw control uses some front wheel braking in response to cornering, giving the front wheels a strong foothold as torque is split and vectored by the all-wheel drive system in real time. The overall drive on slippery surfaces therefore feels highly obedient, predictable, and surprise-free. Attentive drivers will even feel power delivery, and the all-wheel drive torque split adjusts beneath them in response to bumps on slippery roads, helping further smooth and stabilize the ride. So with your safe and careful driving on snow and ice, you'll feel this machine respond quickly and preemptively to certain on-throttle or cornering situations, reducing the tendency to fishtail or plow straight ahead before they occur. The end result is a boost to stability and confidence in specific situations that typically cause stress. This all-wheel drive system is also largely free of lurching, lashing, spinning, and binding sensations in certain challenging situations, which adds further confidence via smoother, more reliable operation more of the time. Rough Road Ride Quality impressed primarily for its body motion control, compared to a recent test drive of the Kia Sportage PHEV. I found reactions from the Outlander PHEV's body over its suspension to be less dramatic, with the vehicle at rest on its wheels much more of the time. On these rough surfaces, shoppers considering both models will likely find the Kia quieter and softer beneath them, and the Outlander a little noisier and bumpier, but ultimately less labor-intensive when the going gets rough. Still, with an ask of about 57000 for my tester, it is far from the most comfortable or quiet drive in a crossover on services like these. 
Other gripes included a malfunctioning cruise control system which was offline for the duration of my test drive. Elsewhere, I appreciated the light and easygoing steering but frequently wished for a little more weight and feedback, for a more direct connection between my hands and the surface of the road. And in many situations, and especially for the first few minutes of driving on a cold morning, the electric motors and associated components are highly audible too. Though light-footed drivers will rarely notice the engine working, it is a relatively noisy and disconnected experience when pushed, as it revs up and down unconstrained by the gears of a conventional transmission. You'll see this powertrain's quietest and most refined work during light throttle application, with the engine revs kept to a minimum. With my electric range depleted, gas electric hybrid fuel economy landed around 10.2 liters per hundred kilometers. That's on a highway heavy test drive in the dead of a northern Ontario winter and with no use of the cruise control. For comparison, the Kia Sportage plug-in hybrid I drove a week earlier tackled very similar conditions using just 6 liters per hundred kilometers. Your results will vary. So to summarize, numerous plug-in hybrid competitors achieve more impressive figures when it comes to fuel economy, though this is less of an issue for drivers who will primarily use the Outlander PF in its virtually gas-free EV mode. Despite a few minor gripes, the Outlander plug-in hybrid's impressive wintertime handling and array of powerful electric driving tools and enhancements should help make it a compelling choice for plug-in curious shoppers after a machine that makes it easy to help maximize your electric driving enjoyment. Well, thank you for watching. My name's Justin Pritchard. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button down below so you never miss a new upload. And until next time, take care and drive safe.